Isaiah chapter 5. Now will I sing to my beloved a song of my beloved. So he's going to sing to the well beloved of my beloved, touching his vineyard. That vineyard, Matthew 21. Matthew 21. And we're going to run to Matthew because Matthew's a book of Jewish, Hebrew. Not church age. I mean, you can spiritualize it, but it's not church age. Matthew 21, 33. Here another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard. There it is. And hedged around about and digged a wine press. Okay. And built a tower. Okay. And led it out to husbandmen and went out to a far country. And the rest of it, it details the prophets. They slain, they killed, and then it talks about the Lord Jesus Christ. In Isaiah 5, verse 1, My beloved has a vineyard, very fruitful hill. He fenced it. So he put a he put a boundary around it. This is mine. That's yours. This is mine. He gathered out the stones thereof. And I mean, you know, remove the stones so you can plant. And planted it with the choicest vine. He hand chose the vine. He hand chose the nation of Israel. Elect. Israel is one of God's elect people of all the people of the world. Built a tower. That's what Jesus said. In the midst of it. And also made a wine press therein. And look. That should bring forth grapes. Typical for a vineyard. And it brought forth wild grapes. I remember when I grew up in New London, there was a little boy. Our neighbor's yard had grapes. And they weren't tended. They grew along the ground. It wasn't, wasn't a vineyard. And I remember every, I think about springtime, the smell of those grapes. Magnificent. They were bluish purple. But man, if you bit into one of those grapes, sour. Oh. That's what Israel is. Sour. I mean, you want a sour pickle. You don't want a sour grape. Wild. It's the wrong type. It's not the intended purpose of what God wanted. Israel is coming up to Jeremiah with the Babylonian captivity, coming to the time of Jesus Christ with Titus 70 AD, and coming to the tribulation period of Jacob's trouble. Those natural grapes are going to be natural in the millennium with Jesus Christ sitting on David's throne. And now, O oh, inhabitants of Jerusalem and the men of Judah, okay, there we go, judge. Judge what? Paul says, judge ourselves. Inquire of God. And I, I do it quite often. I did it last night. God, am I who, what, where, why, how, when you want me to be? Did I please you today, God? And if I didn't please you, what did I do wrong? What is my sin? That not only can I confess it, but I can make it right. You know, people say, judge not, least to be judged. And it's quite often I preach, which I do myself, 
We're to look at God and say, God, where do I stand? And God is saying to Judah and Jerusalem, judge who? Yourselves. Why are you not the grapes I wanted you to be? And they won't judge themselves. Go into the conclusion of Isaiah and go into the book of Jeremiah and Lamentations when Jerusalem's been sacked. I pray you, that's God saying, I pray you, will you look at your life, will you judge yourselves? Betwixt me and my vineyard. What could I have done more to my vineyard? You mean left his throne, was born in Bethlehem of a virgin, according to Isaiah, we're going to be reading soon. And grew up, had three and a half years ministry. Suffered and died upon Calvary's cross, according to the scriptures. Was buried and arose again the third day, according to the scriptures. God done everything for man. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God done it all. And for his Israel here, okay, Jesus Christ hasn't been born. Jesus Christ hasn't died yet. He hand chose Israel of all the nations, all the signs and miracles and wonders that God did in Egypt and at the Red Sea and in the wilderness and going into the promised land under Moses and under Joshua and the judges and the kings. There was no other greater people than the nation of Israel. And as a father loves his children, when Israel disobeyed and Israel was bad, God chastened them. That proverb, Solomon says to a point, I'm not going to quote it correctly. You know, you don't love your child if you don't correct them. The book of Judges, here comes the Midianites, here comes the Philistine, here comes Moab, here comes Ammon. That's because God loved them. And I want you to do right. I want you to repent. I want you to get right. What else could have God done? There's a parable that Jesus will go forward to say about the fig tree, which is also the type of Israel. Cut it down. And the man says, no. Let me dig it up. Let me put some dung. Let me put some fertilizer. Let me let me tend to this. And if not, I'll cut it down. And during the book of Acts, God sent out the dung. He did. He sent out the apostles. He sent out the missionary. He sent out to the children of Israel until Paul was called to the Gentiles. And then after the fact is that fig tree, the leaders of Israel, they just outright rejected Jesus, outright rejected the apostles. Paul says, I'm going to the Gentiles. But Paul never lost his heart for the Jews. And the nation of Israel is set aside now, but an individual Jew can be saved. What else could God have done? He could have cast him in hell. That I have not done in it, in it, in the midst of Israel. I led you by a cloud by day. I led you by a pillar of fire by night. You followed the Ark of the Covenant. Wherefore, when I looked that I should bring forth grapes, okay, I want grapes. Here's my grapes. In the parable of, of, of Matthew 21, the, the, the owner of the vineyard sends the mission, sends the prophets, sends the men of God, and they beat them, they stoned them, they rejected them. I want the fruit. At last, I'll send my son. And what do they do with the son? They rejected him and they killed him outside the vineyard. And God, and, and, and Matthew 21, and in, in Isaiah chapter 5, all right, I come, all right, here's my vineyard. I want grapes. 
uh, you're, you're wild grapes, you're sour grapes. This is not why I attended you. And in Jeremiah, they're going to worship the queen of heaven. And now go to, because you're wild grapes, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. All right. You are not what I wanted you to be. I will take away the hedge thereof. No more protection. No more care. No more blessing. No more, uh, I say protection. No more landmark. Israel today, the land is all of a mess. Oh, Israel, you know, if you give a little more land to these people, and we'll, we'll promise you peace. Okay, here you go. That's not the intention of God. God told them, told Joshua, when you go in there, wipe them all out. They didn't wipe them all out. And God's like, repent, repent. Isaiah, the, the preachers, the prophets. Oh, man, you're, you're, you're bad grapes. So there goes the hedge. There goes the landmark. That landmark will come back when Jesus comes. Because right now in Jerusalem at this very moment on December 29th, 2020, there is the Dumb of the Rock. There's supposed to be the temple there. It ain't there. The hedge is gone. And we'll read about that in a few moments. And it will and it shall be eaten up. And break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down. No protection. Luke 21. This is spoken about Jesus. Oh, you know, they saw Calvary. They didn't even see themselves sinning against God to repent. How did they see Calvary? They didn't obey Isaiah. They didn't obey Jeremiah to see Calvary. They didn't even see themselves in their own sin condition. Luke 21, 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. War. Babylon. Titus. 70 AD. Coming Antichrist. And shall be led away captive. Babylon, Titus, Antichrist, unto all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down unto the Gentiles, unto the times the Gentiles be fulfilled. The church age. They didn't even see the church age. That trodden down is what Jesus said in Luke 21, the, the time of the church age. They didn't even see the church age. But they saw Calvary. Knock it off. Knock it off. And I, God, will lay it waste. Can we go to the Holy Land? It ain't the Holy Land. Not with the Arabs and the, and the Catholics running around. Imagine a Bible-believing Christian running over to the Holy Land and having the, the Arabians, Ishmael, having the Catholics <laughs> telling you about Jesus in the Bible. They have the Koran and they have the Missal. They don't have the Bible. Duh! Stolly, don't you want to see the Holy Land? I will when Jesus Christ comes and it will be absolutely holy without no curse. You waste your money, you go to the Holy Land now. Oh, you can walk the footprints of Jesus. I'll be following Jesus in the, in the millennium. I wouldn't trust no... Ishmaelite. I wouldn't trust no Arabian. I wouldn't. I came out of the Catholic Church. I got saved and came out of the Catholic Church. What are you doing as a Bible believer running back to the Ishmael and running back to the Catholics? Oh, that's where Jesus was born? That's where Jesus died? You're silly gilly dilly booey. 
I will lay it ways. It shall not be pruned. It will be no caring. It's going to be no care. You know, remove the excess. Nor digged. Jesus said that. The guy says, let me dig it about and dung it. The guy's like, don't even dig it. Well, don't turn the dirt over. Don't till the ground. Don't prune those wastes of vines and leaves and just leave it alone. But there shall come up briars and thorns, weeds. The curse, the thorns. That holy land is under a curse of sin of the Jews of Judah and, and Jerusalem. And that curse is not going to be removed. The holiness of Israel and Judah and Jerusalem ain't going to come till Jesus comes. Don't waste your money going over there. If you want to put money to it, put money to a, to a missionary that goes and reaches the, the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ to the Jews, like I do. May I spend money for the gospel being preached to Jews rather than going over there and walking on Jewish ground? You mean the same ground where the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood of God was spilt upon and rejected? That's holy to you? Gee, the Catholics have a holy uh, Good Friday. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon. It's going to dry up. And you know what they've done over there now? They built ir irrigations and man-made pools. And Why do they got to do the man-made? Because God says, I ain't going to give you rain. And man's going over there, and, and they have cultivated their own water. And God says, I ain't watering it. And in the tribulation period, one-third of the water is going to turn to blood again. For the vineyard of the Lord, the vineyard, it belongs to the Lord of the host, is the house of Israel and the men of Judah. His pleasant branch, a plant. There it is. There. Don't you say that's the church. The same land of Matthew 21 is the same land of, of Isaiah 5. And God says it's Israel and Judah is the plant. We Gentiles that are saved, we're grafted in. And to that vine, which that vine is Jesus Christ. And we are to produce fruit. You know what the fruit of the lad to see in church age is today? Wild grapes. You know what God says about those wild grapes? <laughs> You're making me sick. You're making me sick like Jerusalem did. You're making me sick like you. We're following the footsteps of Jerusalem and Judah and Jeremiah. Listen, the church goes out with apostate. The church don't go out great, wonderful, how great we are. You're blind, miserable, poor, and naked, said God. I don't like that preaching. Good. And he, God, looked for judgment. What's the judgment? Upon themselves. Oh, you murdered somebody? Well, the law says we got to stone you. Oh, you deceived that widow. You took advantage of the fatherless. We're gonna take. We gotta pass judgment. They're not doing proper judgment. The nations of the world today ain't doing proper judgment. But behold, oppression against the widow, against the fatherless, against those who are innocent, calling evil good and good evil. That's what they're doing today in 2020. You preach against the pagan festival, you know, you're a bad guy. It's the truth. Oh, no, it's not. Okay. Okay. For righteousness, God wants judgment, not oppression. He wants righteousness. But behold a cry. 
God, I, I, things are not going right. God, they're not treating me right. God, they're lying about me. God. Verse 8. Woe. You know, there are six woes here. There are three woes in the tribulation period. Woe unto them that join house to house. Overcrowding. Apartment houses. That lay field to field. Till there be no place. Man, that's in the world today. I mean, there are places in America and there are places in Israel that if you sneeze, your neighbor can reach their hand out the window and wipe your nose. That they may be ple placed alone in the midst of the earth. Overpopulation, overcrowding. In my ears, saith the Lord of hosts, of a truth, many houses shall be desolate. Remember the other night we read about the, the shortage of men. When Jeremiah comes, many are going to be wiped out and killed. When Titus came, many were wiped out and killed. When the Antichrist comes, many are going to be wiped out and killed. Now, remember, in Isaiah chapter 5, we're not talking about the Gentiles. We're not talking about America. We're not talking about England. We're talking about Israel. And even great and fair, the great and fair houses, the value houses, without inhabitants. They're going to Babylon. They've gone to the world from Titus. And they're going, if not dying, during the tribulation period. I, I read today a, a friend's post, a reliable man that puts a post up. Israel, they're getting ready for the one of the most glandest, greatest sodomite festivities. God says that's a curse. And yet that was going on in Jeremiah's time. That's going on in Isaiah's time. You know, one of the prophets wrote in the, in the Kings or Chronicles, right next to the temple, they had women building or making or sewing blankets for the Sodomites. There were kings that when they came in with their revival, they got rid of the Sodomites out of the land. All over the world, pretty much all over the world, there's a few places. Sodomy, lesbian, and being gay is legalized and it's wanted. Man, we are in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. We are in the days of Isaiah. We are in the days of Jeremiah. Yea, ten acres of vineyards. Shall yield one bath. That's not much. And I mean, we don't need to get into the Jewish measurement. That's not a lot. Ten acres. That ought to produce that ought to produce grapes, raisins, and wine. You'll be lucky if you get grapes. You'll be lucky if you make wine to get raisins. And the seed of a homer, a homer's mount of seed. Shall yield an ephah. That's not much. You know, we are in the day of the church age. We are sowers of the seed of the word of God. And we put much seed out. And it's not. Not many people are getting saved. Now. I ain't talking about say this prayer. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about genuine salvation. Calling upon Jesus Christ. Of who suffered and died according to the scriptures. And was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Where their names are actually being written in the Lamb's book of life. It's salvation is happening but it's not much. 
Not with all the gospel tracts and all the preaching and all the Bible reading. And there are churches again went with sour grapes. Say this prayer. Verse 11. Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning. That sounds good. Get up in the morning. Early bird gets the worm. Yeah. That they may follow strong drink. Uh-oh, alcohol. I knew a guy, we had, we had a neighbor. I, I don't know where he did this, this. But he would get up in the morning early. And he would have a cup of coffee. And the rest of the entire day would be all beer. Beer and alcohol. And he never got saved, never would got saved. And my wife and I would joke that when he entered the gates of hell into the fire, there would be a blue flame for a while. And I, I mean, that's how much one cup of coffee and everything else for the rest of the day was beer and alcohol. There are people that do that. There are people who get up early for the purpose, strong drink. We've had ministries in the morning and come to find out it, it be, here is it's early in the morning and there are already people drunk. That used to astonish me. It don't astonish me no more. That continue until night till wine, that would be alcohol wine there, inflame them. Full force substance abuse. And the harp and the vial and the tabret and the pipe, a jukebox. Or maybe a DJ or a band at the bar. I've been in bars. I've been in jukebox and bars. I've been in the bars where they had a band. Comes out of the King James 1611 Bible, my friend. And wine are in their feast. Are you ready for this one? Deuteronomy 14. Deuteronomy 14. Oh, where are you going, Stiley? I'm going to scriptures. Deuteronomy 14. 26. The wine is in their feast. And thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lust is after, for oxen. All right, there are three times a year that the men were to go to Jerusalem. And he says, listen, if you can't bring your stuff to Jerusalem, he says, sell it. And put in a bag of money. And when you get to Jerusalem, you can buy an oxen. You want to you want to have oxen? You want to have beef? There you go. Or sheep. You'd rather have sheep? Or wine. All right, there's the wine. Or for strong drink. There's in the law, the three times that the men were to go to Jerusalem, God said, all right, you want to get a strong drink? Do you want a Bible verse for alcohol? There it is. Your typical Baptist preacher wouldn't preach that, but there it is. But, we ain't finished. Or if what sober that soul desireth, that thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God. You want to have alcohol? You're going to drink it before the Lord thy God. The Holy God Jehovah. You know the same Jehovah that opened the ground and swallowed up the whole family? The same Jehovah that said, hey, that's the wrong fire. You're gone. That's the same God. Sodom and Gomorrah, you're gone. It's not an orgy. It's a celebration before God, a holy God, in the fear of God. But look at verse 12 of chapter 5 of Isaiah. 
and wine in their feast. There's, uh, there's Deuteronomy 14. But they regard not the work of the Lord. They're getting intoxicated at the feast, Deuteronomy 14, 26, but there's no fear of God. Woo Friend, that's what the church is doing today. We're in the celebration of God with the worldliness and no God regard for God. Read Glad to see in church age, uh, Revelation chapter 3. We're great, we're good, we're wonderful. We do everything worldly and all that, and God has to be happy. That is what Judah and Jerusalem's doing right now. In the name of Jehovah, of course. As the church age says, in the name of Jesus, of course. I in the, in Isaiah, Judah and Jerusalem. Hey, we put the tag of Jehovah on it. God approves. In the church, if we put the tag of Christian or Jesus, what would Jesus do? Jesus bracelets, Jesus movies, Jesus magic shows, Jesus. Really? Revelation chapter three. Let's run over there. I hate to leave you not checking the Bible out because you know what? Christians are not going to check the Bible out. Let's look at the attitude of the scene church age. Verse 17, Revelation 3, 17. Because thou, the church, saith, I am rich, increased with goods, and have no need of nothing. Look at our wonderful, great church. Look at our great, wonderful pastor. Look how great we are. How great we are. Holy God, how great we are. So see how great thou art. Look what God says. Thou knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind. And naked. That's what God says of our church age, my friend. Look at all the people came from Sunday school. You make me sick. We got all the people. Yeah, but you know what? You're poor, miserable, naked, blind. That's our church age. That's the same condition of Isaiah. Hey, Deuteronomy 14. We can buy strong drink. Isaiah chapter 5, we're drinking strong drink without God and having a good old time. You can find alcohol in churches in the Laodicean church age. Listen, my friend, when we tried to start a home church in Norwich, Connecticut, and someone says, Stiley, you, you got to get uh, insurance. Okay, got to get insurance. I called up some insurance. I called up some church insurance companies. I said, we're trying to start a church, and uh, someone told me I need insurance. Okay, just we'll send you the information. Call them up. Hey, I got your information. Well, that's good. What's this alcohol insurance? Well, that's if you have alcohol in your church and somebody gets out and, and, and you know, and they kill somebody or they get out of hand or something like that. Well, I don't want that because we're not going to have alcohol. Well, we have to have that in the insurance. In church insurances, there's a cause for alcohol. In the name of Jesus. Glory, glory, hallelujah. I ain't making this stuff up. I don't need to make it up. But they regard not the work of the... Oh, we don't care about the Lord. That's the churches today. Neither consider the operation of his hands. Oh, I got a testament. You got a test Good. Yeah, I opened up my mailbox and I had a check for $1,000 from the government. I thought we were supposed to be talking about Jesus. We had a, a church I was in and 
uh, once or twice a month, the pastor said, we would have testimonies. What God has done for you. And it got to the point that the pastor said, listen, I want testimonies of what God has done for you. Not with your mother, not with the government, not... <laughs> Stop bragging about, people would get up, raise their hand, they would brag about themselves, they would brag about the government, they would, and they had no Jesus and no God. They didn't value what God has done in their life, but with somebody else. In everything, give thanks to God. To God. Listen, they're talking about the stimulus check. I'm praying for the $2,000 for everybody. And I said, God, if you give us that, if you give us the 500 or 600, or if you give us the 2,000, I'm going to thank you, God. You know, there are Christians out there going to thank Donald Trump. Donald Trump gave us the stimulus. Really? And people say, Stolly, you're crazy when you say there are people that worship Donald Trump. No, I'm not crazy. They're going to thank Donald Trump for their stimulus money, not God. I'll thank God. And I pray to God, if you give me the 500 or 600, forget what it is, or the 2,000. God, how do you want me to use it? I, I, there's two possibilities I can use that money for. God, how do you want me to use it? After I give Lord his part first. Therefore, my people, the Jews, verse 13, are going into captivity. Israel is going into captivity. They're gone. Judah's next, Jeremiah. The church doesn't go into captivity. We are raptured out of here. <laughs> you know what the rapture really is? Oh, boy, I'm going to make some preachers mad now. You know the rapture is? I've had, I'm sick and tired of them being down there. I'm just really sick and tired. They're not doing my word. They're not preaching the gospel. They're, they're, they're phony baloneyism. They think they're great. They think they're, just get them out of there. Come, bring them home. They're ruining my testimony. Yeah! Revelation chapter 3. Get them out of here. You never heard that preach out of Pope in a Baptist church, have you? The church ends with apostasy. Therefore, my people are going into captivity. Israel, Judah, Jacob's trouble. Because they have no knowledge. The church has no knowledge. Oh, we got scholars, we got seminaries, but they don't know nothing. They think Eastern Christmas is a church holiday. They're honorable men. The famous men, the great men, are famished. They're starving. There's a famine of the land, of food, no, of the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Which one? NIV? New King James? RSV? ESV, ESP, ESPN, CNN, Fox. Which one? It sure ain't the KJV. I've been in KJV churches where they changed the Bible right out of the pulpit and nobody made a... You know, in John chapter 14, it's not a mansion, it's a room. And nobody said anything but styling. And I told that preacher, we left your church because you changed the word of God. <gasps> well. And their honorable are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. There's no water. Jesus is the living water and churches are drying up because... 
the living waters has ceased in that church. They're not now out there preaching Jesus. They're not preaching the gospel. Romans Road, Romans Road. Yeah, Romans Road is good if you know how to use it. There'll be people in hell because you use Romans Road incorrectly. <gasps> I know. Therefore, therefore, because of no knowledge, hell has enlarged herself. Why is hell enlarging herself? Because people are going to hell daily. And they're not going to hell just because they reject the gospel being preached. They do. But they're going to hell because the gospel is not being preached. They're going to hell because of the prosperity gospel. They're going to hell because they like the preacher. Listen, I know a couple weeks ago, I spent a week in a hospital and I tried to watch some of those religious programs. Yeah. I tried to give Alston, I couldn't give that guy five minutes. I watched, uh, 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 what's her name? Joyce. Within two minutes, I am preaching against Joyce in the hospital room. And I was lucky that the nurses came in to do my blood. They're like, what are you doing? I said, that woman don't be, need to be up there. All right, let me turn it off so you can do what you need to do. <laughs> hell has enlarged itself because hell is growing every day. How many people died today and it was in, it ended up in hell? I believe my dad was one of them the other day. 33 years of witnessing to him, and he outright rejected Jesus Christ. And opened her mouth, her, her, her. Look at that, hell is a female. Without measure. Jesus said, broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many go thereafter. Isaiah just told you, not everybody goes to heaven. If anybody, we're all going to heaven, you're a liar. Liar, liar, the place you're going is fire. I don't like him preaching. Good. And their glory, how great I am. Pride and arrogance. And their multitude, many will go to Broadway. And their pomp, oh, the holy Pope Father. Oh, the presidency. Oh, the great people of frame and, and the athletes and the richest people. The pomp are going to hell without Jesus Christ. Without the gospel and the faith and belief in Jesus Christ, you will go to hell. Whatever you believe in, whatever you do, whatever you don't do, without Jesus Christ, you go to hell. And he that rejoices, hey, I'm having a great time, I'm so happy, you'll end up in hell too. You won't be so happy in hell shall descend into it, hell. There are happy people that are going into hell. There are famous people that are going into hell. There are rich people going into hell. There are great famous people going to hell. You, don't know, you know who doesn't go to hell? One has put his faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone. The mean man. I don't mean <coughs> the common man shall be brought down. God will break your pride. And the mighty man shall be humbled. You see, the mean man has to be brought down because he's high. <laughs> he's arrogant. The mighty man has to be humbled because hey, look, look, look how look at me. Look at my muscles. Look at my military strength. Look at my money. And the eyes of the lofty, the pride, shall be hungry. 
Pride is a sin. That's the Bible. And I am not going to apologize for anything I've said. And if you got offended, you need to confess your sins. You need to get right, not me. I believe when I get the judgment seat of Christ, well done. Read the lies of the scene church age. Know the lies of the scene church age. God's not pleased. And that includes Stiley Hayward and his ministry too. God's not pleased. I'm in the lads of seeing church. I am no better. I don't give the Lord all I should give him. 